Hello everyone. In today's episode, we are going to look at the probabilistic interpretation of entropy. Now, it should be no surprise that entropy is fundamentally concerned with probabilities, because when we saw the statistical mechanical definition of entropy, which if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below. You should watch that first, otherwise none of this will really make sense. But we discussed there that entropy, for each macro state that our system can be in, that is, for each of the macroscopic quantities we can measure, so if we measure our system to be at a certain temperature, volume, or pressure, whatever it may be, then there are a number of different compatible microstates which would each give rise to those macroscopic quantities we observe. So if we measure our system to be at a certain temperature, pressure, and volume, then there are a number of different ways we could arrange the particles within our system which would all give rise to that temperature, pressure, and volume. And in that sense, the entropy is in some way quantifying our uncertainty or our ignorance about the system, because it's saying that we've measured all these quantities for our system, but still, this is the, the amount which we are uncertain about the actual microscopic state of affairs that our system is in. And the formula we came up with is S is equal to KB, the Boltzmann constant, multiplied by Lund, the natural logarithm of omega, where omega are the number of possible microstates that our system can be in, each microstate being a particular arrangement of the atoms of our system. Now, it wasn't until uh, Gibbs, Josiah Willard Gibbs, that formally the connection between entropy and probability was discovered. And this is also a precursor into looking at the information theory version of entropy, which a lot of people think is actually the most fundamental version of entropy. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into the proof as put forward by Gibbs and look at the probabilistic interpretation of entropy. Right, so there are a number of different stages to this proof put forward by Gibbs. Um, the first stage is I'm going to define S total, S tot. And what S total is, is it's the entropy of the system when we have absolutely zero information about the system. So we haven't made any measurements of any macroscopic variables. So the system in that case can be in any possible microstate. It can be in a microstate associated with any different macroscopic combination of variables. So in that case, S tot is equal to KB LUN capital N, where I'm defining capital N to be the total number of microstates that the system has. So this is the total entropy of the system before we have any information about it. We have no information on any macroscopic variables, so the system can be in literally any microstate. So as by this formula, the entropy S tot is equal to KB ln of N. Now, the next thing to do is to start to think about different ways we can think about this total entropy. And this was the very clever thing that Gibbs did. And what Gibbs did is he said, let's take our total entropy of the system when we have no information about it. And let's say that S tot is equal to S plus S micro. Now, what do these terms mean? Well, S is the entropy associated with the system being able to be in any possible uh, macro state. So that is that we can measure a whole range of different macroscopic variables when we actually come to measure our system. It could be at a temperature of 5 degrees or 10 degrees or 30 degrees. It could be at a volume of 1 meter or 10 meters. It could, be, it could have any different combination of macroscopic quantities associated with it. And the entropy associated with the system being able to be in any different possible um, possible macro state is equal to this S here. And S micro is the entropy associated with the system being able to be in any possible micro state within each macro state. So once we have measured the macro state, then the system could, be, could have a whole different number of possible arrangements of all the individual particles, and all those arrangements would be compatible with the macroscopic values we've measured for that particular macro state. Now, if you're wondering why this is an addition, because normally when we have these things, we have multiplications, right? If, um, if I have five different macro states and each one of those macro states um, has three associated micro states with it, then I in total have 
15 total microstates, right? So it's a bit strange that we have an addition here um, instead of a multiplication. We're saying that the total entropy is equal to this entropy plus this entropy rather than multiplied by. But that's because entropies deal with logarithms, right? So if we have um, two logarithms, if we have ln a um, plus ln b, then by the laws of logarithms, this is equal to ln of a, b, right? So additions here translate into multiplications in logarithms. And that's why we can add these two entropies, because when we come to this formula, we will be multiplying these. So if we have five different macro states, this S will be KB ln 5. And then this micro state, let's say each macro state has three associated micro states with it. Then we have plus KB ln of 3. Then this is equal to KB ln of 5 times 3 which is KB ln 15, lo and behold, that is the total entropy because we have 15 microstates in total. So that's why we can, um, we can have this as an addition of, of entropy. So that's the first step, right? Now, remember that. We're going to come back to that in a second. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to say, what is the probability of finding our system in the ith macrostate? So, in, I'm going to call that P subscript I, and that's the probability of finding the system in the i macro state. And well, let's say there are um, n i micro states which are compatible with being in the i macro state. That is, there are n i different um, arrangements of all the particles in the system, each of which have the same macroscopic quantities of the i macro state. Then the probability of being in the i macro state is equal to the number of micro states compatible with it divided by capital N, the total number of microstates um, which our system can be in. And um, so this is the probability of being in the ith macrostate. As a quick check, we can sum over all the macrostates um, of PI. So we're summing the probability of being in any macrostate the system can be in, and that is equal to the sum of the ni over n, which is equal to n over n, which is equal to 1. Hey, presto, that's wonderful because the probability has to equal 1, because if the system, um, the system has to be in one of the states, it can be it, right? So again, that equals 1. All is good there. So this is the probability of being the i macro state. What we're going to do next is work out what this s micro is. So s micro is equal to the expected value of the i of the entropy associated with the ith macro state. So <clears throat> we are going to work out an average here. And then um, because we are doing the total, um, we can put this average into this formula and it will, it will work out over the whole thing. So what is this? Well, the expected value is equal to, um, well, for the ith macro state, the probability of being in the ith macro state is pi. And the entropy associated with the i macrostate, or with the microstates associated with the i macrostate, sorry, is SI. Um, so the expected value is summing this quantity over all the possible states, the macrostates. I'm not going to go over expected values, but if you haven't used them before, you might want to go in and look up how expected values work. So what is this equal to? Well, um, we know that um, SI, the, the state, the ith state, has NI associated macro states with it. So we're going to use this formula here. So this is equal to the sum over I of PI, this first term, multiplied by KB um, ln of NI. So this is S micro. Um, again, we've used this statistical mechanical verge definition of entropy here, and we've said that the i state has ni microstates associated with it. So this is the entropy associated with the microstates of being in the i state. Um, so now we are going to rearrange this equation here, and we're going to say that s is equal to s total minus s micro 
and we're nearly done here. Um, and now we are going to sub in this equation over here and this equation over here into here. So this is equal to, um, and I'll bring the KB out the front. So KB, because it's common in both terms. Um, and then we have from S total, ln of capital N, and then here minus the sum over I of um, PI ln of Ni. And then the, uh, the last thing to note is that um, we here, so here we had that if we add logarithms together, they multiply. Well, another rule of logarithms is that if you minus logarithms, then um, they divide. So if I take ln of n minus ln of ni, that is equal to ln of n over ni. And another trick with logarithms is that we can flip this and add a minus sign. So that's equal to minus ln of ni over n. And what did we say ni over n was? That's the probability of being in the i state. So this is equal to minus um, ln of pi. And we're very nearly done because what we're going to do is we are going to bring this ln of n into this summation here. And what do we have? We have that s is equal to minus kb the sum over i of pi ln of pi. And there you have it. That is the Gibbs expression for entropy. And we've taken away all this thing to do with sort of microstates, and we have managed to express it purely in terms of probability. And that is a very, very powerful tool, because we will see that this version of entropy here is directly related and directly consequential of the Shannon entropy, the information content definition of entropy. And we've arrived at this definition without looking at information theory at all. We've done it purely from a statistics viewpoint and a thermodynamics viewpoint. And we're going to arrive at this also from an information content viewpoint. And that's why this is so important. It was Gibbs who first made the connection that there is something much more fundamental beneath all of these different interpretations of entropy. And what we're going to do, or what we've largely already done, is connect all these different versions up and find that there are these very strong connections between each different interpretation of entropy. And that's why entropy is such a fascinating concept, because in itself, entropy is so abstract, but the way we have access through it is through all these different expressions, each of which seem to be expressing it in different terms, and each of which give a window into what the actual fundamental concept of entropy is really all about. So there you have the Gibbs formulation of entropy. I hope you enjoyed that. And in the next video, we are going to look at the Shannon entropy and how we can arrive at an information content definition of entropy. And that also relates to the Maxwell's demon episode we saw in the last video. Look forward to seeing you then.